welcome back to the crafty nook so today i want to finally get around to making myself a journal to journal in uh, our current life i have a journal from 2020 one from 2022 and um it's time for me to get to where I can journal current everyday things. And I went down a rabbit hole. I think I got an email from Persnickety Prince. So, um, as you guys may know, I, um, was, I got a, gosh, I can't get my life together today. <laughs> it's been a very long day. Um, it's like, what time is it? 7.30 at night. And, uh, I just can't get my life, my words in my life together. I actually have already filmed the process video for what I've done. Um, I did that yesterday, but it was not conducive to filming, um, with audio. And so I don't have an intro yet. So that's what I'm doing here. So, I got the new crepe paper Gingham Garden Collection through Frank Garcia Studios, specifically to make a journal out of. Um, and in the meantime, trying to find time to make a journal in between everything else I have going on, I um, got an email from Persnickety Prince, um, you know, trying to solicit and get me to spend money there which I'm fine with. Um, they were talking about how Gen Z is bringing back Smashbooks for their memory keeping. And it, it sparked a memory that I have a Smashbook. I actually have two. One of them is a yellow one with like a compass type situation on the front that I um, have been using to document or got to document a road trip we took in 2018. In fact, let me see if I can Here grab is it. my yellow smash book um, that we, uh, we took a road trip to the Grand Canyon um, in 2019. And so I have partial part of that trip documented in here. And honestly, I love it. So so much. It's just not finished yet. And so I'm hoping I can get inspired to finish it. What is currently done in here. Oh, excuse my tummy. I ate. I don't know why it's acting like that. Uh, most of what I have documented in here is what I documented while we were gone. Um, and my style has changed a little bit, but gosh, I just love all of the stuff in here. It brings me great joy um, to look through this. So, um, I got to a part where I thought it was weird and I have strongly considered starting over on this project in a, see, this is where it gets weird. This is a bunch of flips that I created, <laughs> but I think that's just part of the process. Anyway, I thought about starting over in a project life album or like rings, but I don't think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna keep powering through. Um, I do love smash books. I actually had a couple of finished smash, smash books that, um, got damaged. I did what I guess you would call smash booking when I was in high school. My senior year book album that I made also got damaged in a flood, but it, um, w it was a lot like this. Um, it came pre-made like this, um, from the Herf Jones, I think it is who we ordered our class rings from. So I got these two from Tuesday morning. Um, and I'm very sad they don't make these anymore. I even tried looking on Amazon and couldn't find any. I don't know if I put this here or not, or if it came like that. But in here, I had started this when um, my wife and I went to this place in Oklahoma for our anniversary in 2018, I think it was. We ended up in a bunch of different places. This is 2019. Um, 
And so I have the, all this stuff in the pocket and I have one paper down, which is coming up and this glued down here. And honestly, y'all, that is literally it. And I am not yet committed to putting anything in here. I just don't know. I guess I wanted to see if I was really gonna enjoy Smashbooks. Because I feel like this was junk journaling before junk journaling was junk journaling. And so, I decided that I was going to make my own. And I got a cinch for my birthday slash Christmas. I can't remember which one because they're just a month apart. Um, and I decided I was gonna make a smash book since you can't buy them anymore. And so I used my cinch and this collection from Crate Paper as well as several other things. There's some Pink Fresh Studio in here. There's some Liz, Dear Lizzie. Oh my gosh. Oh, my phone. I'm sorry. That was weird. There's some Diz Lizzie polka dot party in here. And then music paper, vintage antique papers, some printables, all kinds of stuff. And I have used that and I have created this lovely, lovely thing which when you put it up next to a smash book, it looks the same inside. I do wish that it was bigger. And I think next time, if, if this is my jam, then next time I am going to make it bigger. I didn't put near as many pages because my spine is not near as big and I want to add some stuff to it. I have not glued any of this in yet. I just cinched it. And I really liked being able to make my own because I was able to add bags, like a glassine bag. I was able to um, add some ruffles. I added this bag from when we went out of town. And then um, there was something else. I was able to fold things up and make pockets and choose my papers. I've got some vintage book paper in here and I'm gonna add some pockets and it's gonna be fantastic. So that is what I recorded yesterday was this, all of this, the selecting of the papers, trimming them down, getting ready to bind. I did the, the binding um, and I am ready now to um, decide if I'm going to sew these things on or not and get some stuff built inside here and actually get this binding sewn down. Um, so if you would like to come along and see what I did here, how I created it and maybe be inspired to try a spiral bound junk journal yourself slash smash book revive then come along and let's see what we can make. Okay, so I'm hiding in the bedroom with the doors closed so that I can film or record whatever, a voiceover, because dogs. Anyway, so I'm showing you the coil that I'm using. I decided on this kind of minty, tealy colored one because I think it matches the fabric well. I've already gutted my book. And now I am using Fabri-Tac to glue the book cover, the gutted book cover, to the fabric. <coughs> but first I have to fight with the Fabri-Tac because it's new. And I can't get it to open. So you're going to see me stab it. Yes, there it is. I stabbed it. <laughs> so you're probably going to hear the cat get really mad because the doors are closed. She doesn't like closed doors. So I apologize. So Fabri-Tac has a tendency to bleed through fabric. Um, you'd think a fabric glue wouldn't do that, but anyway. So I have this silicone brush that I picked up in the art supply section of the Lob um, or Hobby Lobby, whatever you call it. And so see, it just seeped through right there. 
And so I'm gluing this down. Now I really like to start with my back cover first because I always screw something up. And um, I didn't intentionally start with the back this time, but it ended up being the back, thank goodness, because I did screw it up. It seeped through, put too much glue, which is fine. Um, because this pattern on this fabric has a top and a bottom or up and a down, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so because it seeped through on the other one, I think it seeped through because I was worried that it was going to dry before I got the fabric on. I decided to go in small sections to do this front part. I do think it seeps through a little bit still, but it's fine. It all turns out in the wash. It's handmade. It's going to be fine. Now I'm just, you know, cutting these corners and I messed up on them. I cut them too short. It's fine. Folding this fabric over, gluing it down, making sure it's adhered well. Using this little silicone brush. It, this little brush is actually cool. The Fabri-Tac just peels right off of it. It's the coolest thing. Um, just squishing that down making sure I get in those little crevices and now I'm measuring to see how big I need my pages and I'm starting to cut down pages I think it ended up being like five and a half by nine or something like that and I did have to finagle a few different pages to make sure I didn't lose too much I was kind of sad about the size I do wish it was bigger um, but it's fine. It'll do what I need it to do. There's only like, I want to say 16, maybe 20 pages tops in this. And you're going to see me edit the amount of pages many, many times. Um, so here's edit number one. I'm trying to make sure they're the right size because I did just start doing things willy nilly because I wanted to keep certain patterns and stuff like that. And a few of the pages did get a little bit too long, but it's fine. You can always trim them down. I had a big stack of papers that I ended up not using all of. Like here, I decided against those two right then. I was going to put book pages in, decided not to use the paper trimmer to cut those. And then even decided not to put them in the book because they were way too fragile. That one's giant, so I didn't use it. These are those 12 by 12 papers that I bought specifically for this. And I do again wish that it was bigger because I think it would have worked well. So now I'm just trying to figure out what pages I'm for sure gonna use. Um, at this point, I haven't done a full edit yet. I'm just stacking things together and seeing how they're gonna fit. I think right in here, I realize, oh crap, that's real big. <laughs> so I start trying to pull out papers I know I'm gonna use or that I absolutely love and I don't wanna get rid of. And so that's what's happening now. And I'm also counting, I think. I don't really know. Oh, excuse me, sorry. I've been at work all day, I'm tired. I love that paper, I love this paper. I love that paper. I think I decided not to use one of those. I was gonna make a big giant pocket out of that, but I also have a lot of pockets. So this is the first edit of me. Okay, there's all those papers. I decide that I'm going to use that for my binding and then I just start pulling things out and then stack it up again see I'm still thinking I'm going to use those vintage papers I'm seeing how they're going to look in the journal and what am I doing now cleaning I'm cleaning getting out the cinch which I do love the cinch I did have to read the instructions again I think here I am making another edit pulling out these pages that I don't have to have because I'm realizing they're not gonna fit there's me reading the instructions because I need to know what I'm doing and here I am punching the holes so the cinch makes it super easy you put the guide in you punch holes you move it down and you drop this little lever into the second from the last hole punch a hole and then do it again until you've reached the end super self-explanatory very easy to do I only messed up once and that's because I didn't have the paper all the way back so what am I doing here oh last paper punching the last paper 
put my guide back because Lord knows I don't need to lose that. Then you take and count the amount of holes that you have and then compare that and I have to count again because, you know, I probably have ADD or something. Count those holes, then count the amount of small prongs on the wire and then cut it. And then that gives you your wire length. And then you attach it to the side, it holds onto it. And then you thread your papers on. So now I'm trying to figure out what order do I want these pages. And here I am figuring out my order. Um, I get it wrong and have to do it again, which is fine. It's all about the process, right? So here's where I mess up. I put all these big pages and then I just got two small pages, three small pages. And I'm like, ooh, maybe that won't work. So I'm trying to find a place for that. And then at some point, okay, here's me. Okay, and now I'm just threading them on. But here what's gonna happen is at some point I realize I want a bigger page in the back and I want it to be the same as the one in the front. So I put all these pages on. Look at that, I love it. And then I decide, oh, I think I want this page in the very back, see? And then it'll be the same. So when you open it from the back, it's the same as when you open it from the front, which I'm not real sure why I was worried about that because the inside covers don't look exactly the same. They're just very similar. But here I am taking everything off and then putting everything back on. And it didn't really take that long. It's super easy. Now that I have everything on, I also made another mistake. There's nowhere for the binding. It's not on here yet. So, spoiler alert. <laughs> I have to take it apart again. <laughs> but this time, I go ahead and cinch it down, even though it's not right. It's fine. Here we go, cinching it down, even though it's wrong. I tried to cinch it the wrong way. I wanted to pull the handle forward, but you don't. You push it down, which is a little bit awkward if you're used to pulling levers towards you, which I'm not. I don't know what. Anyway, it just would feels like it would make sense to pull towards me. Here's where I realized, crap, I didn't even punch the holes in this bad boy. Luckily, it was cut down to the right size. Put my guide back because I'll lose that hoe if I'm not careful. Here we go. Using the pliers to open it up. And now I've got to score it, but I don't have a scoreboard that's big enough. So I'm just using the guide on my trimmer and a scoring tool. And here I am folding that score line. I do probably need to get a scoreboard, like a big one. I just haven't. I have the small one that goes with the envelope punch board. I think the front side is the scoreboard, the back side is envelope punch board, and here I am attaching that. And so if I had not have done it wrong, I would have attached it to where the binding closure was in the middle in the back. That is what I would love to have done, but I didn't do it that way and it's fine. I don't even know exactly what the logistics would be to make that happen, but it's fine. Uh, then I use my pliers to pull down the edges and if you look, that just looks great, doesn't it? Except the pages are too long because again, I made a mistake and it's fine. We all do this. <laughs> Somewhere, someone's making all these errors and nobody's noticing because they cut them out of their video. <laughs> but I did not do that. I left it in because we do real life here. And that is completely fine with me. So here we go. They fit in there. And then I literally spent probably 10 minutes doing this little flippy flap thing. Just making sure it was going to open and close and do what I wanted. And then I decided to measure the pages for these inside flappy bits and they look fabulous and so i'm taking it all apart and i'm going to glue this together because we're t it's time i think that's what's coming it might not be i don't really know what i'm doing right now what am i doing oh this is where i'm like oh i wish this binding was inside there but it's not i'm actually not gluing i'm gonna be sewing here in a second so here we are bringing my sewing machine covering cat hair Trying to decide in the dark <laughs> what color I want of uh, thread. So I do settle on the Lello. I thought about the pink, but I really wanted to add some more Lello into this. 
And honestly, I think that's what I want for the cover. So here's my sewing machine getting my bobbin threaded. Boom, 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 boom. I need some more bobbin so I can thread all those colors. And here's me awkwardly sewing and ignore my face in the background. That's a screenshot from when I was on the news and I look really weird. That's why it's just sitting there and it's not anywhere. And then I realize, oh crap, you can see me. And I turn it around because nobody needs to see that. And here's me awkwardly sewing some more with my one hand, making people dizzy with the phone. I'm so sorry. I just wanted okay. to be aesthetic, so, I guess. Oops, oh, I I'm going spent, over. Hold on. I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Let's see. Uh, maybe 30 minutes. Um, sewing in this little journal. And now I need to glue some things on. Because I decided not to sew everything. And I want to trim some of these tails. So I'm just going to flip through. So this I did wrong. I should have sewn this on first and then sewn the side. But I didn't do that. <laughs> because I don't know why. So I'm just gonna put some glue on this little, because it's so kind of fragile. And there's really not a good place to glue. had spring break and I did not get nearly as much done or accomplished as I thought I would which is fine um, that week just flew by so you always feel like it's gonna be a long time and then when it's happening it just flies by so fast I was not ready to go back to work. But also I was, you know, I do really enjoy my job. And so it was nice to get back on a routine. Was not super excited about wearing real pants though. Fancy clothes. I'm usually a very quiet crafter and I think that's why I fast forward through my videos so much but I do very much enjoy those videos where the people talk the whole time and like that's part of what gets me to tune in and watch their process because they kind of talk you through it uh -oh. I just get in a zone and forget that I'm filming sometimes. <laughs> forget that I should probably be talking. Do I want this bag to be so big? I'm sure it's fine. So I leave myself little notes like this and like this to remind me of what I'm doing because I sometimes have great ideas and then can't remember them. have something down and I'll be like, well, now what did I want to do with this again? Anyway. I'm 
I love this. This bag came from a Rocket Fizz in Hot Springs. And Rocket Fizz is like a candy store. They have some vintage inspired treats. And this was just a bag, a mystery bag. And it had all kinds of stuff in it, like a Pez dispenser and something else. Anyway, I thought it was super cute. And I have some ephemera that was already in there. Uh-oh. I forgot to put this on here. Let's see. Do I need it? I don't know if I need it. I'm sure that'll be okay. This is some trim from like the bridal section. I thought it was lovely. And I hardly ever have a use for it. So I figured this was the perfect place to put it. So let's bind this sucker. Let's get it in into the book. I gotta figure out what glue I want to use. We'll just use Fabri-Tac. because this fabric clearly has an up and I thought I put this in upside down for a second. okay there's that now I have two of these pieces and I picked this one for the blue side and this one or the pink side, I believe. And I think that looks fine. Okay. So I guess we'll use fabric tech again. Okay, here I am again. Sorry about the last voiceover. So I am gluing down this little hunk of fabric there because this is going to be a pocket and that is exposed and I don't want things to get stuck in that and get caught so I'm making sure that gets glued down all the way um, before I glue this front pocket on. I should probably have done that and then let it dry. 
because I have to wait a second and you see me poking it, making sure it's dry. <laughs> and instead, I cover it with a piece of washi because I'm impatient. Because I already have glue on here and I get really anxious about the glue drying too fast. Am I the only one who gets like that? But it gives me great anxiety if I've already put glue down and I'm not ready. Like, I, I get like real panicky trying to get my glue or keep my glue from drying. And then I panic about the glue bottle being open. You see me put the lid on that. Anybody else have glue anxiety? Because I have glue anxiety. <laughs> so I'm gluing this front flappy. What is it? No, it's a pocket, not a flap. And then here I am gluing the back. The back ends up being too long, but it's fine. This is my personal journal. I really, I don't know where I stand on making journals for strangers yet. Um, but I, I am opening an Etsy store with other items that are not journals. So we'll see how that goes and then how I feel about selling journals to strangers. Because I do very much enjoy making journals. Um, my favorite part is picking out all the pretty things and getting them together. And then my absolute favorite part I'm going to talk about later. But it's it's decorating the cover. That's my favorite part. Anyway, I'm trying to hold this down with some clips because it's too long. And ooh, I don't want to go over this time. So here I am back on the video. Let's do a quick little flip through to see what we're working with. Then it's on to my favorite part, the cover. It's probably my absolute favorite part of building a journal. Okay. So we have a pocket here. That actually worked so well. My least favorite part of making a journal is binding the signatures in. Because I just feel like I never get it right. So now let's work on this cover. I so I have these frames. I have several of them. I went through um, my stash some and pulled out a few that I really liked. So there's this one, which I, I like. And then I have this one, which could go there, 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 there. I kind of like it up here. This one, 
which could also go, I kind of like it this way. And then I have this one, which I kind of like the contrast that this brings, but I can paint these any color. I kind of want, so I have this small journal here or the small book here that I'm in love with. And I kind of want to save this one for something small like this. So I kind of want to hold off on that one. Uh, let's see. And then I have these from the Gingham Garden collection. And I kind of like this butterfly. And of course these big flowers. But they're these are vellum type stickers. And so I'm going to have to put them on, like back them on something. This one, I like that. That said these little moments. And I like that it's yellow, kind of contrasts. A little bit and then there was another one. Oh, this one here it says magic I don't know this is hard Okay, I got a snack and I got some inspiration. I dug around in my stash and I found this book when I pulled out that smash book. And um, I, I kind of love the vibe that it's got. And this is kind of what I was going for. It, a couple of things have fallen off because I hot glued on. This was the first thing I ever covered and um, was just like a little experiment for me and so I think this was originally what I was going to use for that road trip but then I found the smash book anyhow I love this this is bringing me lots of joy and so I pulled out some of my other things um and I have some cut apart sheets that came with this collection so I'm going to pull those out because that's what this is is part of a cut apart and let's see what I can make Okay, so this is probably going to take longer than I expected. And I think I'm going to do a whole separate video on the cover. So I'm going to close this out for now. So thanks for hanging out in the Crafty Nook. And I'll see you next time where we're going to decorate this cover. Bye!